almost every day, we wake up and we hear something troubling. Whether it be in our own lives, our community, nationally, or in other parts of the world, we're constantly plagued by natural disasters, violence, abuse, assault, theft, so forth and so on. That it makes us wonder if there's hope. See, right now, politicians and celebrities are going on and on and on telling us what we should or shouldn't be doing to prevent these crimes from keep happening. And while that's happening, plenty of people are questioning if there's hope. Because when you hear massive violence happening every three to six months, at least twice a year, you're questioning if there is hope. And people are questioning, why is this happening? And why isn't God doing anything about it? Well, first of all, we must remember that God created a free will. And the devil will take people away from the Lord and turn him to evil to hurt his children. Secondly, we must remember that there's, there is no hope. Is the devil telling us that is the devil trying to stray us away from the Lord? Because that is his ultimate goal. And in response to why doesn't the Lord do anything? Well, I want to look at a few things first. The Bible series. When the Bible series came out, it broke historical records for the most viewers. Out of all the movies, television shows, and everything else that's out at that time, Son of God and the Bible series beat all of them. Many of these shows and movies, Christians are uncomfortable to watch. And a lot of these movies, Christian movies that are popular, that are making you know, the top five, if not even the number one blockbuster, are not in as many theaters as these more secular ones. The Bible series was so popular that it not only boosted sales for the book it was based off of, but boosted sales over the actual Bible. People went out more than they were and bought the Word of God to read the Word of God. The show was so popular, they had to release it on DVD six months before initially planned. Duck Dynasty, a reality television show about a Christian family. This has been the number one, tele number one reality show since it's aired. And there's been plenty of people trying to stop it or take people off of the show. And the more they try that, the more viewers are lost. So they have no choice but to keep this family because thousands and millions of people want this Christian family on TV. Hollywood is even slowly, secretly taking notice that the Bible and the Lord sells. Even some of the most popular non-religious films have Jesus snuck in there. May the, the force be with you. Sounds a lot like may the Lord be with you. That's not a coincidence. The Lego movie, a very popular children's movie, one probably one of the most popular children's movie, has got Christianity snuck in there. What do you think they're referring to when they say the man upstairs? And I probably don't have to remind people about the religious... Christian themes behind Lord of the Rings and the Chronicles of Narnia. Although these books may be older, and these movies may a little be a little older as well, they're still the number one books being sold. Why? Why are these things so popular? Because people, there's hope and peace in the Bible, there's hope and peace in the Lord. We don't have the answers to everything. We don't understand why all these things are always happening. 
But there's a Christian song I want to reference, but I'm not going to reference it word for word because I don't have the okay to do so. But this song is about, you know, bad things happening, why the Lord isn't doing anything. And the writer says to the Lord, why don't you do something? And the Lord says, I did. I created you. People can question and rant and get mad all over social media or their own lives as much as they want. But what good is that going to do? What good are you doing by just ranting over social media, blaming groups of people who aren't even a, who aren't even a, a part of it? There's hope in the Lord and the Bible. And we the day that we accepted Christ into our hearts, no matter what our denomination, no matter our age, are called to spread that hope and peace to those who are hurting. We are clearly a hurting world. And we may not be able to stop all evil, but we can ensure that people are find the hope and peace that we have found with the Lord. I didn't think I'd be doing this here. It's always been my dream to witness to people and spread the word of Jesus. I've been doing it since I was a kid. I love it. People always tell me I smile nonstop when I speak of the Lord. My whole life is one huge testimony that there's peace and the hope of Jesus. You know, you name it, most likely I've been through it. And I'm only 28. And yet my faith, even when it's shaking, still is there. My heart has always been the Lord's because there's faith and hope in it. And we are given special talents, whatever they may be, to spread that hope to others. He leaves the 99 to go search for the one. Sometimes he uses us to search for the one. Now, I'm not referring to one person in particular. I'm referring to groups of people that Jesus will go out and he will use us to find. We are all given a person or people that we are called to witness to. And it may take a very, very long time. Believe me. There are people in my life I am shocked that I have been called a witness to. I understand it, and it's hard, and it's frustrating, and sometimes you just want to pull your hair out. But God gave you talents to do that for a reason. You've got to go and you have to spread the hope and peace of Jesus Christ, or we are going to continue being a hurting world. There's hope in the blood of Jesus. There's hope in knowing your sins are forgiven and you are renewed. There's hope that you will see your loved ones again. All you have to do is accept Jesus. Don't just donate blood. Don't just hug. Don't just pray. Don't just donate food and clothes and your time. Yes, do those things, please. But take that opportunity to sit down with them and be the Bible that they will see. Sometimes we're the only Bible other people will ever know. And we need to take this opportunity to be that Bible. I want to close this with a Bible verse. Kind of a long Bible verse this time. A little longer than the one in my blog. Blog, blog, blog. I said blog. Okay. It is... Palms 91, 1 through five, 6. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the follower's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wing you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Rampart. You will not fear in the tower of the night, 
nor in the arrow that flies by day, nor in the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. What that's saying is, is the Lord, he will protect you. And he will have ref you have peace in, in him. But people won't know that if we don't show it. Please subscribe to the PJNet channel that my my vlogs are shown on. And don't forget, up here above my head will appear my blog that you can find, uh, robinbirdie316.wordpress.com. So remember, Christ is for you, not against you.